This week we're going to highlight our weekly update on U.S. corn crop conditions. We're also going to take a look at short-term weather trends as we near a critical time period for pollination. And we're also going to highlight again that December corn futures is trading at the highest level for this time of year in nine years. Hi, this is Brian Basting with Advanced Trading. Let's talk about the corn market. We moved into the latter half of July and these markets remain historically volatile. Let's start out this week looking at the weekly changes in crop condition ratings from the USDA. Our map as usual here shows change in good to excellent ratings compared to the previous week. Notice nationwide no change at 65% good to excellent. Last year at this time we were at 69%, so still a bit below last year. You can see it's really a mixed bag. The Dakotas uh, unfortunately continued to see hot, dry conditions. Those conditions deteriorated in the latest week. However, we did see some improvement in Iowa, Illinois, Nebraska, as well as uh, Michigan. So really a mixed bag this week. And that's reflected as we look at our U.S. Corn Crop Condition Index, which is unchanged this week. Notice that it was above now where the level was in 2017 and 2019, but still notably below several of those other years, most recent years, 2018 and 2020, for example. Let's now look at crop progress here. U.S. corn silking progress is at 56% done nationwide. So that's actually a tad above the five-year average. The next two weeks, between now and August 1st, on average, we pollinate more than a third of the corn crop, on average 34%. So if that's realized this year, we'll be at 90% on August 1st. Really underscores the importance of weather as the uh, end of July approaches. Speaking of weather, this week our slides are courtesy of T-Storm weather. Again, a critical time period for corn pollination here in late July. We're looking at the next 14 days temperature-wise. Notice here in the western belt, we're looking at hot temperatures. Basically anywhere from plus 5 to minus 5 of 95 degrees. So you can put a range on that of 90 to 100 degrees. Now as we move further east here, it's going to cool down, but it won't be cool. It will still be warm in that eastern area. So again, over the next 14 days, it does look like we're going to wrap up July on a warm note. Now we're looking at precip totals for the next seven days. Next seven days, we're really looking at the heaviest totals, significant totals east of the Mississippi River. Not much rain in that area west of the Mississippi River where it's forecast to be warm. Now we're going to wrap things up here July 27th through August 2nd. Last week in July, we're looking at that rainfall expanding further west here, which would be good news for some of those drier areas. However, it's unlikely it's going to be heavy rain across those areas, more scattered variety. So kind of a mixed bag here as the last two weeks of July unfold. Again, the weather can change on a dime here, so we strongly encourage you to continue to work closely with your trusted risk management advisor. Let's wrap things up this week looking at trends in December corn futures. Now, December corn futures here again are trading at the highest level for this time of year since mid-July of 2012, or a nine-year high. Can't underscore how important it is to realize that we're looking at crop insurance again in February and October. The variance in that market between those two periods is being underscored this year. Again, strongly encourage you to work closely with your trusted risk management advisor. Now, if you'd like more information, please feel free to contact us at 800-664-2321. We'll put you in contact with one of our risk management consultants. We'll be happy to visit with you at your convenience. And remember, we upload every Wednesday. Make sure to subscribe to our channel and never miss an upload. Thanks a lot. Have a good week.